If you make the tragic mistake of using these weapons, there will be consequences and you will be held accountable. Obama's warning to Assad amid signs Syria is preparing its chemical weapons for possible use against rebels. Israel refuses to back down in the row over settlements despite international condemnation. The Duke of Cambridge leaves his wife's bedside following confirmation they're expecting a baby. But the Duchess remains in hospital, suffering from a severe form of morning sickness. And in sports, Australia, England and Wales are all drawn together for the 2015 Rugby World Cup. This is Sky World News with Karine Gohari. Welcome to World News. The United States says the regime in Syria could be planning to use chemical weapons against its own people. A U.S. official claims the country has begun mixing chemicals for possible sarin gas attacks on opposition forces. Barack Obama has warned President Assad he'll face consequences if it happens. Sky's Mark Smith reports. An estimated 40,000 people have already been killed in 20 months of violence. And now Bashar al-Assad could be upping the stakes in his fight against the opposition. According to the White House, Assad's regime may resort to the use of chemical weapons. And President Obama had this warning for his Syrian counterpart. And today I want to make it absolutely clear to Assad and those under his command, the world is watching. The use of chemical weapons is and would be totally unacceptable. And if you make the tragic mistake of using these weapons, there will be consequences and you will be held accountable. The U.S. is taking the threat seriously enough to plan ahead for such an escalation. This contingency planning is the responsible thing to do, and we are also actively consulting with friends, allies, and the opposition. Uh, but I wouldn't want to speculate about what, uh, what action we might take. This is the kind of destruction President Assad's forces can achieve using more conventional means. Amateur video posted on the internet appears to show the aftermath of a government airstrike on the town of Rusaline on the border with Turkey. Several people are reported dead. Vehicles on fire, buildings destroyed, a desperate rush to get the injured to hospital. Scenes that have become commonplace since the uprising began in March last year. The ongoing violence has led to another high-profile defection from the Syrian government. Foreign Ministry spokesman Jihad Makdisi, who up to now has staunchly defended the regime's actions, is reported to have left the country. Sky sources say he was helped by British intelligence. In neighboring Turkey, anger on the streets over a visit by Vladimir Putin. Russia is one of Syria's closest allies and has vetoed three UN resolutions aimed at providing support to the opposition. But Turkey's Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan sees President Putin as the key to calming a conflict that sent more than 100,000 refugees fleeing to Turkish soil. In the meantime, the opposition continues to fight back, increasingly using anti-aircraft weapons against forces loyal to Bashar al-Assad. But if what Washington fears turns out to be true and the regime's assaults turn chemical, it could mean a deadly new stage in an already bloody conflict. Mark Smith, Sky News. Israel's government is refusing to back down on controversial plans to expand settlement building in the West Bank. There's been international condemnation of the proposal with criticism from Britain, America and the United Nations. The area in question is known as E1, a portion of land between Palestinian East Jerusalem and the Jewish settlement of Ma'ali Adumim, where Israel wants to build 3,000 new settler homes. Doing so would separate most of East Jerusalem from the West Bank, which Palestinians say threatens the chance of establishing a future independent state with Jerusalem as its capital. We'll bring you more on the diplomatic battle over the land. But first, Sky's Middle East correspondent Sam Kiley reports from Mali Adumim. 
This is the front line of Israel's expansion into the occupied Palestinian West Bank, a suburb called Mala Adamim. Israeli plans to expand this Jewish settlement into these hills to the east of Jerusalem, an area known as E1, provoked the British government to summon Israel's ambassador to London for addressing down. And this is what it's all about, a wooded series of hillsides on the outskirts of East Jerusalem. Now the thing is, if the Israelis build here on E1, it will cut Palestinian East Jerusalem off from the rest of the Palestinian territories forever. Israel's decision to abandon a commitment given to the US not to build E1 was prompted by the UN's vote to grant Palestine non-member observer status. The move was seen as a triumph for Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. The victory in New York was met with defiance from Israel's settler leadership. The mayor of Mala Adamim is adamant that Israel should offer no compromise on settlements. Israeli government has to be brave enough and to stick to, to the truth. The truth is that this residential neighborhood is very, very important to Malaya Dumim uh, people, to Malaya Dumim city. Israel's left hopes that international pressure could be used to get Israel to back away from its settlement expansion plans. I think Netanyahu is serious about this, but I don't think it's a done deal. I think left to his own devices, this is a plan that he will pursue. It discloses his real aspirations in the West Bank and in Jerusalem. However, if there will be resolute international engagement, I think that Netanyahu can be um, convinced to reconsider. European powers fear that as the settlements expand, the chances of any real peace deal fade and fade fast. Challenge is today. After 45 years of occupation and settlement construction, making the two-state solution impossible, what will the international community actually do to stop the settlement construction and to render the two-state solution uh, possible? For all the diplomatic drama, though, Israel is used to European discontent. It won't shift its position until the US, which repeated its opposition to settlements today, takes tougher action. And so far, there's been little sign of that. Sam Kiley, Sky News, Mala Adamim. Messages of congratulations have been pouring in from around the world for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, who have confirmed they're expecting a baby. St James's Palace made the announcement after the Duchess was admitted to hospital, suffering from a severe type of morning sickness yesterday. She's likely to remain in hospital for a number of days. Our, real, our royal correspondent, Paul Harrison, reports a warning. His report does contain flash photography right from the start. Prince William wasn't hanging about, nor was there a smile for the cameras, despite his delight at the fact he and wife Kate are expecting their first child. It's just a matter of days since we last saw Kate, at her old school, she got stuck in on the hockey pitch in her heels and steered the gossip away from talk of pregnancy. Rumours of a royal baby have been spreading for months, hitting a peak as the couple visited Cambridge last week. Mum-to-be Kate clearly had babies on her mind, while William received a baby grow, bearing the slogan, Daddy's little co-pilot. But the proud parents-to-be were forced to announce their good news well before the 12-week mark, as Kate was admitted to a central London hospital suffering from acute morning sickness. The couple had driven to hospital after spending the weekend with the Middleton family. At their local Bucklebury pub, the news has gone down well. You've got to have something positive to look forward to and, you know, wish them all the best with it, really. So, yeah. um, but especially with their normal people as well at the end of the day, um, you know. You sort of, John said they're, they're from the area, family's local. Delighted, delighted, absolutely, yes, yes. My wife, she's in Georgia, in, uh, over in Russia working, so I rang her and told her the news, as you do. <laughs> Both Kate and William have a natural way with children. And just weeks ago, on a solo engagement in Gateshead, an inquisitive and perhaps by then already pregnant Kate had lots of questions for young mothers. Do you help each other out and things? Because I'm sure you have good days and bad days. <laughs> it's probably really nice when you're having a bad day to be helped by someone who's having a good day. The couple has made no secret of their desire to have a family, broaching the subject even on the day their engagement was announced. 
I, I think we'll take it one step at a time. We'll sort of get over the marriage thing first, and then maybe look at the kids. But uh, obviously, you know, we we, uh, we want a family, so um, you know, we'll have to start thinking about that. And just like news of their engagement, it seems the families again found out only at the last minute. If Prince Charles knew he was soon to be a grandfather, he gave nothing away on a visit to flood-stricken St Asaph. Alongside family, politicians too, among the first to be told the news. I'm delighted for them. I'm sure they'll make absolutely brilliant parents and I'm sure everyone around the country will be celebrating with them tonight. Were you ticked off? Did you know before the rest of us? I got a little note came into a meeting I was uh, having and I found it quite difficult to keep it to myself, but uh, I was, but not, not, not in any great advance of anyone else. And the news travelled quickly across the pond. On behalf of everyone here in the White House, beginning with the President and the First Lady, uh, we extend our congratulations to the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Uh, on the welcome news uh, this morning out of London uh, that they are expecting their first child. The prince is holding the baby, looking very pleased, and Princess Diana is smiling, looking simply radiant. What's clear is baby Cambridge will be born into a different world to the one the Duke was born into. Kate's pregnancy will be followed via a multitude of media, but the Duke and Duchess are savvy and is why their announcement was made as Kate was admitted to hospital. And because this is a very different world, whether their child is a boy or a girl, they will be the future monarch. Paul Harrison, Sky News. And this is how the world's media reacted to the news of a royal baby on the way. Rumours have swirled around Kate Middleton with an announcement today from the palace. Duchess of Cambridge is pregnant. This is the headline you're probably going to see again and again for the next nine months. Royal baby William and Kate announce they're expecting their first child. So, how have the ardent royalists down under received the news of an heir to the throne? Sky's Jonathan Samuels is in Sydney. Jonathan, how are people reacting over there? Well, it's hard for anyone not to be uh, delighted, and that includes uh, Australians as well, of course. The newspapers here had already gone to print when the news was announced. It was uh, in the middle of the night, of course, that the news came through. But newspaper websites are more than making up for it now, inviting comment from readers. And uh, everyone uh, is uh, very excited, I think it's fair to say. As people woke up here in Australia, they turned on the TV, turned on the radio, and the news of the royal baby was leading every bulletin. In fact, one of the commercial networks here. Channel 9 is already plugging its news program tonight. They're going to do a royal baby special with a large chunk of programming coming uh, direct from London. So uh, everyone here uh, is very pleased indeed. I spoke to the editor of one of the uh, uh, gossip magazines uh, a little bit earlier. She told me that the newsroom had gone into meltdown. They're having to completely rip up this week's edition and start all over again because they love their royal news out here. In in fact, it comes under the heading of showbiz, which is quite unusual. They don't really have royal correspondents, but they have showbiz correspondents who cover the royal agenda. So I can assure you it will be all over the newspapers and the magazines for uh, some time to come. Uh, politicians and uh, the great and good have also been commenting. Uh, the Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, said that she's uh, delighted by the news. She's famous for being a Republican, of course. And this is what the Prime Minister of New Zealand had to say a few moments ago. Great news for William and Kate and obviously for the royal family. Uh, they'll be very excited. Obviously we wish them you know, very, very well. Uh, and uh, clearly you know, Kate's going through a bit of morning sickness, so there'll be a lot of New Zealand women that will be able to sympathise with that. We wish her a you know, speedy and healthy you know, back to fitness and health. Well, the royal family are riding a surge of popularity out here at the moment. It was just over a year ago that the Queen came to Australia and was met by huge crowds.